Welcome to Do the Math America. I am Charlene Math Shaman. We work on word problems and how to translate words into symbols containing variables from pages 117 to 120 from the Beginning Algebra book. Please use the link in the description box below this video for the PDF file, which you may use to print out a hard copy for yourself. As with all my previous videos, I will animate the examples of this lesson for you. In order to solve word problems in algebra, we must learn how to translate words into symbols containing variables. For example, the phrase 5 more than x can be translated to be x plus 5. 5 less than x would be x minus 5. x less than 5 would be 5 minus x. The phrase x minus 5 would translate to the expression x minus 5. x is less than 5 would translate to the expression x less than 5 x is greater than 5 translates to the expression x greater than 5. The phrase x is less than or equal to 5 translates to the expression x less than or equal to 5. x is greater than or equal to 5 translates to the expression x greater than or equal to 5. The sum of 5 and x translates to the expression 5 plus x. The difference between 5 and x translates to the expression 5 minus x. Next, we have the phrase the product of 5 and x, which translates to the expression 5x. The quotient of 5 and x becomes the expression 5 minus over x, or 5 divided by x. x increased by 5 becomes the expression x plus 5. The phrase x decreased by 5 is the expression x minus 5. Is x times 5 is the expression 5x. x divided by 5 is the expression x over 5. 5 times the quantity x decreased by 3 would be x minus 3 in parentheses times 5. 5 times the difference of x and 3 would be x minus 3 in parentheses times 5. 5 times the sum of x and 3 would be x plus 3 in parentheses times 5. Next, we have 3 more than 5 times x, which translates to 5x plus 3. The phrase 3 increased by 5 times x becomes the expression 3 plus 5x. The difference between 5 times x and 3 is the expression 5x minus 3. 3 decreased by 5 times x becomes the expression 3 minus 5x. 3 less than 5 times x becomes the expression 5x minus 3. The phrase 3 less than half of x becomes the expression 1 half x minus 3. It's half the difference between x and 3 translates to the expression x minus 3 in parentheses times 1 half. Next, we have twice the sum of x and 3, which translates to x plus 3 in parentheses times 2. Twice x comma increased by 3 translates to 2x plus 3. Three consecutive integers in which n is an integer would be written as n, n plus 1, and n plus 2. 
three consecutive even integers in which n is an even integer would be written as n, n plus 2, and n plus 4. Three consecutive odd integers in which n is an odd integer would also be written as n, n plus 2, and n plus 4. Three consecutive positive multiples of 5, where n is a multiple of 5, would be written as n, n plus 5, and n plus 10. Examples. Translate each statement into a variable expression. Number one. There are 15 fewer girls than boys in a class. How many girls are there if the number of boys is B? And the answer is B minus 15 equals the number of girls in class. Example two, you paid $50 cash and made 10 equal monthly payments. What is the total cost of the product if the amount in dollars of each of the monthly payments is X? So with a problem like this, I like to start by writing down the facts of the problem. So first we paid $50 in cash, and then we made 10 equal monthly payments. So I write that down. And the total cost of the product is the unknown, or what we want to solve for. And finally, the amount in dollars of each of the monthly payments is x. So those are the facts of our problem. What we want here is to write down an equation to solve for the total cost of the product. So we start with total cost equals, and we have paid $50 in cash. We write that down and made 10 equal monthly payments, all in the amounts of x, so it'd be 10 times x. So our final equation is total cost equals 50 plus 10x. Next, translate each sentence into an equation. Number one, eight less than a number n is 15. The equation would be written as n minus 8 equals 15. Is is equals. Number 2. 4 more than a number n is 12. The equation is n plus 4 equals 12. Example 3. 5 more than a number n is equal to 9. The equation is n plus 5 equals 9. 5 times the quantity x decreased by 3 is 25. x decreased by 3 is x minus 3. Put parentheses around that. Times 5 equals 25. Twice the sum of a number x and 3 is 22. The sum of a number x and 3 would be x plus 3. Put parentheses around that. Twice that would be 2 times that equals 22. A number n decreased by 12 is 30. The equation would be n minus 12 equals 30. The result of a number x multiplied by 5 decreased by 3 is 57. The equation would be written as x times 5, or 5x minus 3 equals 57. The sum of three consecutive numbers is 48. Three consecutive numbers would be n, n plus 1, and n plus 2. We add each of those together, equals 48. Write an equation involving x if the perimeter of the figure is 24. I like to use a straight edge to draw out my figures. It makes the problems clearer. Perimeter is the sum of the, of the sides, so we just need to add up the sides. So we have x plus 6 plus 8 equals 24 or x plus 14 equals 24.
Write an equation involving x if the perimeter of the figure is 32. Once again, I like using a straight edge to draw out my figure. It doesn't have to be perfectly proportional, but if it's nice and neat, it makes it easier to understand the problem and how to write out the equation. So as we said before, the perimeter of a figure is the sum of the sides. In this case, we would just add up the sides, which gives us x plus x plus 6 plus 6 equals 32. And we can simplify that to be 2x plus 12 equals 32. One third of a pizza sold for $3.50. Write an equation that represents the cost C of the whole pizza. So C equals the cost of the whole pizza. And the word of means times. So one third of a pizza would be one third times C, the cost of the whole pizza. So the equation would be one third C equals 350. You paid $50 cash and made 10 equal monthly payments. The total cost of the product was $400. If the amount in dollars of each of the monthly payments is X, write an equation that represents the, the amount of each of the monthly payments. So we start by clarifying that X is the amount of the monthly payments. And since we made 10 equal monthly payments, it would be 10 times x, or 10x, plus $50 in cash. So it would be 10x plus 50 equals the total, which is 400. So 10x plus 50 equals 400. John picks up two-thirds of the books in the shelf. There are 12 books left in the shelf. Write an equation that represents the number n of the books in the shelf to begin with. When there are problems that involve fractions, I like to draw out the fractions using a fraction rod system. So I can see what does 2 thirds look like in a picture. And what is happening, or what are the facts of the problem that I need to pay attention to? So John picks up two-thirds of the books, so I can uh, mark out two-thirds that he's picked up. And then there are 12 books left in the shelf. So then the last third equals 12. And I mark that out on my picture. So I clarify for myself that n equals the number of books in the shelf to begin with. I write down the other facts of the problem. Two thirds of the books were picked up, which means one third was left on the shelf. And I can see from the picture that one third of the books was equals 12. And of is times, so that would be written as one thirds times n, the total number of books, equals 12. So we have one third times n equals 12. The practice problems for this lesson are on pages 119 and 120. The more practice problems you do, the easier this will get. So I suggest you do as many problems as you need to get a firm grasp of this material. And check your answers with those in pages 302 of the book. I hope this video was helpful to you. Thank you for joining me at Do the Math America.